Hi, uh, in today's episode, we're going to try to understand this one property of synapse that is occlusion and subliminal fringe. Okay, so let's just jump into it occlusion and subliminal fringe. So, before we go to that, this is one small thing that you need to understand. So, when a neuronal discharge occurs, the action potential train goes through the axon and it branches the terminal buttons bran branches and goes to different neurons so there is this one definitive area which this exclusively goes to that is this discharge zone that you see over here so what happens is this discharge zone where a definitive central discharge zone is there which this particular axon is going to exclusively give to on the other hand there are on the periphery outliers where there is a facilitated zone can you see that so this one central area is a major discharge zone and on the periphery you can see facilitated zones what it means that there's another axon coming from here branching and giving its terminal buttons over here here as well there's another axon branching and giving its terminal buttons. and they all have their own discharge zones but what we notice is that there is slight overlap at the edges. Edges are also called the fringes, the fringe area. So in the fringe area, there is some sort of overlap. That is this particular neuron is stimulated both by your, this axon as well as the axon that is coming over here. So that is where you'll have to understand the importance of these two things. That is the occlusion and subliminal fringe. Okay, so let's just take a look at this diagram over here. So it's a synapse, multiple synapses branching and interconnecting. Okay, so say we stimulate one, this axon, one is stimulated, action potential train is going. So this is going to go and stimulate your A, this neuron over here. That same action potential train from this is going to get carried like this and is going to go here and here as well. So it's going to go to this and this. So in this example, your A neuron, which has been highlighted in dark blue, is your discharge zone, while the light blue, the sky blue ones that I've shown over here, are your facilitated or the fringe areas. Now, why so? Just take a look at the example that i give over here so now apart from this i'm stimulating the second axon that is coming when i stimulate that second axon this is going to stimulate this it's also going to stimulate the same things that we mentioned here so these two neurons are lying between them and in a facilitated zone such that they are stimulated by both of them some sort of an overlap is there so these are the facilitated zones in the periphery or the fringes while what you see here this is a discharge zone because this is exclusively stimulated by this this not by this in any way you can't see it getting stimulated in any way by this so this stimulates predominantly only this exclusively that and this stimulates this exclusively while in the fringe area you can see some sort of overlap over here so once you understood this we'll go on to occlusion first and then subliminal fridge okay so uh, as i mentioned you can again have another pair coming and you know it can give to other areas multiple uh, permutation computations can exist so one major thing that you need to understand between these two subliminal fringe and occlusion is the nature of the stimuli. First and most important thing is the nature of the stimuli. So, first we'll try giving a very strong stimulation. Okay, so please do remember that. The first difference is the nature of the stimuli that you're giving. So, first we're going to give a very strong stimuli. Okay, so first thing we're going to individually stimulate one so when we give a very strong stimulus that means it's strong enough that the epsp has risen and it is going to result in an action potential this is giving 
its branches to A, which is the distinctive zone, right? Discharge zone, and an action potential is generated at the axon hillock over here. It is also going to stimulate these two, and because of which there is action potential generated, which can be recorded over here. So what happened when we gave a very strong stimulation to this one? It resulted in action potentials being recorded in three different neurons. So, in this example, we have uh, many different neurons, but what happened is when you finally recorded it, a total of three neuronal discharges action potential were recorded when we stimulated this. Now, let's stimulate two instead of one. So, if we stimulate two now, you can Notice how an action potential is now generated here. The same time, action potential is going to get generated here as well as here. So again, when two was stimulated, three strains of action potentials were separately recorded. Okay, so one was stimulated, it resulted in three. Two was stimulated, it resulted in total of three. Okay, so mathematically, if you were to assume and if you were to stimulate both one and two together right right now just uh, think that we don't know about uh, the fringe areas or facilitated area, discharge area or anything we just put electrodes and we're just recording it for the first time okay so we stimulated one axon and it gave three signals we stimulated a second axon it gave three signals now if we were to stimulate these two together Naturally, mathematically, we would assume it to have a total of six outputs now. Okay, so let's see what happens. So, as I said, right now we don't really know the fact that there are fringe areas and all that. Okay, so what happened now when both of them are stimulated together? Obviously, this main discharge zone is stimulated, and your facilitated zone is also stimulated. It's a very strong uh, stimulation, but it's already a strong stimulus. Okay, so action potential has your all or none law. The amplitude of the action potential is not going to increase. Okay, and it is giving supply to only this limited number of neurons. So that is how we came to know that there is a fringe area. Now this fringe area what is going to happen now instead of 1 giving 3 and 2 giving 3 and a total now when we stimulate both of them together giving a total of 6 that we had assumed right now what we see is that when 1 and 2 together was stimulated it is now giving a total output of 4 which is lesser than what we had expected so right now what happened was when a strong stimulation was given it's as if those extra signals that went in the fringe area, that is this, this fringe area, got occluded. So that's why occlusion. So first thing, a strong stimulus. When a strong stimulus comes, all or none law has to be applied when action potential is generated. So when action potential is generated, you see that in this fringe area, it's not going to increase the amplitude of the action potential, nor is it going to stimulate more neurons, which it does not give any connections to. So, the total output is much less than what we had expected when individually stimulating it and adding it up. Okay, so it's as if in the fringe areas, the connections ended up getting occluded because a strong stimulus cannot give further increase because of all or none law so this is occlusion the main factor for is a strong stimulation now just like this instead of a strong stimulus let's give a weak stimulus a weak stimulus a sub minimal stimulus also called subliminal so a subliminal or sub minimal stimulus so minimal stimulus is one which is needed to give rise to an action potential to, re to reach the threshold so that at least one action potential is generated so that is a minimal stimulus if we give something less than that what is going to happen this 
minimal stimulus is going to result in some sort of action potentials here. Sorry, it's going to result in excitatory postsynaptic potential. Not action potential, it's going to result in EPSP, excitatory postsynaptic potentials over here. So these excitatory postsynaptic potentials have not reached the threshold because we are giving a subliminal or subminimal stimulus. So is there going to be an action potential because of that? There won't be an action potential. So let's stimulate one now with a weak stimulation. When we stimulate one with a weak stimulation, we'll see that there is no action potential in any of these. No final recorded action potential is there in any of the final output. Okay. So when one was stimulated, total was zero. Let's stimulate two. Is it going to be any different? No, it's a subliminal stimulus, right? So because of that, the final output again is going to be zero, no action potential at all. So when one was stimulated separately, zero action potentials with the weak stimulation. That is a subliminal stimulation. And when two was stimulated separately, again it was a there was no action potential. Okay, so when they were stimulated separately, no action potentials. So when we, if we were to stimulate them together also, we would normally assume, unless there is some sort of overlap, we would normally assume to be having no final output at all. Yes, so let's see what happens. We are stimulating one and two at the same time. So what happens in the main discharge zone, which is exclusive for that, only one stimulation from that one particular axon. So here, that main discharge zone for this, and this is for this. You can see that no action potential is generated, because no overlap is there in these areas, because that is the main primary exclusive discharge zone. But when you look at the fringe areas, Right, the facilitated areas. So, in this first uh, neuron, EPSPs from one is coming, EPSPs from two is coming. So, both the EPSPs together are going to spatially submit. Okay, that's another property of synapse. So, the, these uh, are going to spatially submit. And if it reaches threshold, is going to result in an action potential. So say in this example, when both of these subliminal stimulus are added together, they resulted in the threshold value and resulted in an action potential. In a similar way, these two again get stimulated to ex uh, excitatory postsynaptic potential, summate, and finally an action potential is generated. So what happened now? When one was stimulated separately, there was no action potential at all. When two was stimulated separately, there was no action potential at all. And when one and two is going to be stimulated together, we would normally assume it to still have no action potential because we're giving a subliminal stimulus. But what we realize is that in the fringe areas, right, in this fringe area, when a subliminal stimulus is given, it resulted in an action potential. So this is subliminal fringe. So in case you ever have, even after all these concepts, if you still have trouble understanding this and differentiating between them, you just learn one thing. It's all in the name because in subliminal fringe, just in the name, everything is there. You give a subliminal stimulus and what happens in the fringe area? Okay, so subliminal means what kind of stimulus are you giving here? Weak stimulus. So when a weak stimulus is given, the main discharge zone there is no action potential but in the fringe area because of spatial summation there is no action potential so this is much greater than what we would assume but if we were to give a strong stimulation in both of them a strong two strong stimuli then it's as if the central area got occluded because if it can't rise beyond one particular level so that is occlusion and this is subliminal fringe and as you can understand right now, basic difference is in the stimulus that is given. In subliminal fringe, we are giving a subliminal or weak stimulus and a strong stimulation is given in occlusion. Okay, so let's just look at the diagram again. Yeah, 
So there is one major discharge zone over here. Okay, so that is exclusively stimulated by this one axon. But on the periphery, in the fringe areas, there is a facilitated zone which can have some sort of overlap with neighboring axons that are coming by. So that can result in either occlusion in this area or subliminal fringe based on the nature of the stimulus. Okay, so hope it is clear now. Thank you. Thank you.